Hello, and welcome to B-Sides. So here in B-Sides Budapest, we're gonna start the next session, which is Offensive Azure Security. My name is Sergey, and I will be presenter uh, during this session. Th this session is going to cover Azure Azure service and how we can pen test this popular cloud service. So you will see live demos of different techniques that may be used to uh, let's say compromise or pen test, if you wish, uh, this Azure, Azure ser different, ser different resources that we may deploy in Azure. So let me show you one more slide about me and then we're going to cover something more, more important, which is the, our, our content. So my name is Sergey once again. Um, very important where I'm from. I'm from Russia. So that's my burden to do all of this hacking. And as you can see on the slide, I, I do a lot of pen test and also I'm an instructor, conference speaker. If you want to contact me um, during the session, after the session, whatever it may be, here's the LinkedIn URL. Go ahead and find me. You may ask something, say something, or you may just find some other conferences where I speak. Uh, I'm Azure MVP. I have OSCP, OSAP, MCT, whatever it may be, certifications. Uh, but I think the, your goal here is not just listen about me, but finally let's start the session. So let's start the session and let's take a look at our agenda. And you can see here three figures and you may ask, what the hell is that? Uh, I'm waiting for agenda, uh, wh what those things are all about. So that's, that's my agenda. As I mentioned before, this session will be about, uh, will be about like an offensive things, uh, will be about dark side. I will show you how those three environments may be compromised. So how hybrid AD may be compromised when you have on-premise AD and you have um, AD Connect and in Azure AD as well, how those things may be compromised. You will see how virtual machines may be compromised and also the last one is application in pass services um, using uh, the, it, 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 it will use only pass services, how those things may be compromised as well. That's my agenda. So let's get started. As I mentioned before, a session will be based on live demos. So you will not see a lot of slides here. I will use slides to just show where we are, but I will not really use slides for technical explanation. So the first scenario is my on-prem active directory with AD Connect um, and of course Azure AD as well. So let me jump to demos you to demo as I promised you. And so here I have a simple configuration. First of all I have the main controller and I have AD Connect server as well. Um, and it's it's very very typical configuration. Oh, of course, you have multiple domain controllers. Doesn't really matter. So the the, the idea here, I have um, Active Directory on premises, and I have AD Connect that connects me to to Azure AD. What may go wrong here um, if I connect my on premise AD to, to to Azure AD using AD Connect? So when I do it. Uh, during configuration of AD Connect, I must um, choose, um, I must create AD, what's called AD Forest account. AD Forest account, that's an account that will, that will, 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 will get access to on-prem database, um, Azure, Azure AD to Azure AD to get um, accounts from there, to get users, to get groups. So this account will be used to access your on-premises AD. And so uh, during the AD, uh, AD Connect configuration, you must create this account, or you may also pre-create, but more secure option is more recommended is the first one, create new AD account. So AD Connect will create a, a, a new account for you. Let's take a look on this account. If I go back to my DC, and in folder called users, I may find this account. It's called msl underscore and something, something, something. If I look at the account itself, this account should be just a regular user and looks like there is no problem with this account, just, just a low brief account. And yeah, it is, it is, but, but uh, when you also configure AD Connect, you will 
you will also enable, if you wish, of course, uh, some options, optional features. And when, when you enable optional features, that account will have more permissions. Let's take a look on some features that are, uh, you, you may see, you, you, you see some features on the slide that I will give you commentaries only about one feature. And very important feature, which is highly recommended, is called password hash sync. So this feature uh, allows you to store password hashes of your on-premises users in Azure AD. So after synchronization, not only user itself will be created in the cloud, but also user password uh, hashed will be stored in the cloud as well. And so it's very commanded disaster recovery option because if you lose connectivity between your on-premises and the cloud, users will be able to log into the cloud with using stored hashes and stored hashes in the cloud. That's one of the one, one, one of the benefits of this password hash sync. Uh, but when you enable password hash sync, account, a MySQL account, will have extra permissions. Account will have will have this permit to those two permissions. Uh, so replicate directory changes and replicate directory changes all. So what those permissions are all about? Those permissions will allow you to replicate Active Directory. So you will act like you, you may act like a domain controller. So let's take a look on this uh, permissions. If I go to properties of my domain and go to security, find this MSL and find yeah, here we go. So I have those permissions. Um, and you may say here, all right, so yeah, that's that's quite a lot of permissions, but this account was created automatically by Microsoft and we don't know the password of this account. So it should be secure. Um, yeah, it is, it is secure, but uh, how do you think if we have an account and we don't know the password, someone, or something must know this password if if this something wants to use this account. So AD Connect, AD Connect itself must know this password. Let's take a look where, where this value is stored. Let me jump back to AD Connect and open uh, AD Connect database, which is AD Sync, called AD Sync. And here we have t multiple tables. I need table called uh, MMS Management Agent. Uh, let me remove columns I don't need. And those columns as well. And let's run that. So let me find this account. And yeah, it's here. So as you can see here, that's, that's, my, that's my account in SQL database, AD Connect database. And also there's a parameter called password, which is says encrypted. So yeah, Password is there, but password is encrypted. Um, hmm, not that simple. So there's no plain text password. All right, maybe we, maybe it's possible to decrypt password. Uh, yeah, it is. If you are a local administrator on AD Connect server, and here's the problem. So before before all of this. It's, it's a common configuration, but where's the, where, where, where's the problem? The problem if, is if your regular admin, like a server admin, middle level admin, um, tier two admin, whatever it may be, uh, may have um, local admin access to AD Connect server. Let me show you what, what may happen if you have configuration like this. I'm gonna open PowerShell um, and try to decrypt this uh, this account. You made it manually, but it will be not very straightforward. Much better is to uh, find tool called AD Connect Dump. You may find free on GitHub. By the way, on the GitHub, you may also find the link how to uh, decrypt account manually. So the whole procedure, but it will take so much time. I will, I'm, I'm not going to show you here. Uh, but if you want to just have a result, let me run this tool. And look at this. Now I have, now I have account and the password. So uh, using this value, let me copy this password. I'm gonna jump to another machine and let me open this one as different user. Type password here 
and user here and click OK. So now what I'm trying to do, I'm, go I'm going to open command prompt on client machine as this MS OL user. I also have a command prompt opened. Let me show you who am I. Uh, I'm a user J though, so just just like a regular user uh, who is local admin on this machine, but not uh, not an administrator in the main. Now let's see a second command prompt. Here I am MSOL user, and so let's try to access the main controller from both command prompts. Let me try to do it as JDAW. Nope, denied. Let's try to do it as um, MSOL denied. So it's uh, the accounts, they don't have permissions to access that directory. But once again, uh, one, ac one account, which is MSOL, has permissions to replicate Active Directory. And so if I want to use this permission, I will run a tool called Mimikatz. Uh, by the way, uh, Mimikatz may be detected by any antivirus. Uh, I have a different session on how to evade antiviruses and so on. So. Uh, go ahead and find me on LinkedIn. You will find a link there as well on my session about evasion. And, and here, what I want to do, I want to run a simple command called LSA dump DC sync, and I want to, I want to get information about user trainer. So I will replicate information about the main administrator, and now I have a hash of this user. Now I'm going to open Mimikatz again. Uh, also, I want to say privilege, privilege, debug, and run very well-known command called pass the hash. And let me copy this hash and place here. And now, if I try to access the main controller, look at this. Now I have permissions to access the main controller, so it means I'm a domain admin. And so now we have this environment compromised. I'm a domain admin, and I became domain admin based on my access to Azure AD Connect server. So if you have administrators who are have access to this environment, I mean, to AD Connect, be careful, those guys, they may become domain admins if they wish. So uh, next scenario will be uh, my Jenkins virtual machines, and um, I have a Jenkins application, J Jen Jenkins application uh, deployed on virtual machines and one node on Windows, second node on Linux. Uh, to be fair, it doesn't really matter if it's Jenkins or something else. My goal here is not to show you Jenkins. The goal is to show you uh, that I may compromise different operating systems, maybe Linux, maybe Windows, doesn't really matter. So let me jump back to demo. Um, and so let's continue from here. Um, now I have the main admin credentials and I want to start to explore Azure and virtual machines in Azure. Um, if I'm a domain admin, what I can do with this, with those permissions? So li literally I can connect to any workstation on this network. Let me show you what I can do if, if I have permission like this, if I can connect to any workstation. I'm gonna open workstation one workstation and another workstation. And here I want to say A, oh, sorry, uh, AZ uh, account list. And let's, let's output that as a table. And I can see here the list of my subscriptions. All right, let's try this. Let's try to do the same on the second machine. All right, now I can see that it says, please run AZ login to access your account. So it asked me for login here, but didn't ask me for login here. So probably it means that somewhere credentials to access the cloud are cached. Uh, where, they, uh, where are they cached? If you go to user profile and you find a folder called that Azure and here are cache credentials so if I'm a domain admin what I can do I can connect to workstation of developer or system admin 
who has access to Azure and steal this token. Let's try to take this token. Let's zip it real quick. And copy this to second machine. Uh, let me remove this. And extract this dot Azure. All right, so now let's try again, fingers crossed. And now I have list of subscription. It means I'm, I have the same level of access as the administrator on that machine, uh, where I get the, 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 the folder with token. So with those permissions, I can start to explore virtual machines. So let's say AZ VM list and I should see the list of virtual machines from this account. Yeah, I can see the list of machines. Uh, I'm interested in Jenkins, so I will I will I will test those two machines, Jenkins Master and Jenkins Slave. All right. So what I can do with virtual machines? Um, now let me jump to portal and let me give you some demo about virtual machines uh, so so you, you'll get more ideas uh, what may be the problem uh, if you look at the virtual machines you may find uh, the option called run command let's click, click there and for windows machine oh that's for, sorry it's Linux machine for Linux machine you may find the command to run shell script it means you will run a bash bash script uh, so if i click there I may run script here. If I go to Windows machine, I'm gonna see the same but PowerShell script. Let's let's see that. And here I can I can see PowerShell script. What is interesting about this run command? First of all, they will be executed with the highest permissions, with the highest privileges. They will be executed on Windows with system privileges and on Linux with root privileges. That's the first idea that you should keep in mind. Second idea, uh, to execute them, you just need to be a reader on the machine level. So let's, let, let me show you this. If I click reader and click and look at my permissions, uh, compute, and let me find run command. Uh, so look, look, look at this. So if I if I'm a reader, I have permissions to run commands. All right. So that that that's that, 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 that's my that's maybe a problem. If some if this if this if that user had read permissions, that user may run commands. So if I want to connect the virtual machine and like let's say I want to get into virtual machine, I must know normally a username and password. But let me show you how with run commands I can bypass those requirements um, what i want to do I, I will run um, reverse shell commands and so those commands will allow me to get into virtual machine without restrictions let's take a look on that um, <clears throat> so let me let's first try a linux reverse shell i'm gonna run um this this script from command prompt and i will run the command like this so that should give me a reverse shell uh, with Linux machine. Let's try that. Um, what is what is important to know? That run commands not super quick, so we may need to wait some number of seconds. I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah. So let's wait. Let's wait. Um, Thirty seconds, and hopefully, I will get a shell uh, in parallel. In parallel, let me run. Let me try to run that for window on Windows, and Windows will be slightly different. In my case, um, I will download uh, my my executable with reverse shell and just run it. Let's try to do it here. All right, let's see. I already have a shell on, on Linux. Let's see if I type IDM root here, and so I can do whatever I want on Linux machine. Um, okay. So I'm root here and I'm a god on this machine. 
Let's take a look on Windows. And yeah, we have the same for Windows. Um, and I'm, I work as the local system. And to just finish the demo about Jenkins, um, maybe you know, maybe not, maybe not. There is the, there's an airlock of Jenkins and you may find the initial password um, there in Jenkins. So if I copy this, copy this password and I, I can find Um, all right, so let me just copy this first. Um, log into, try to log into Jenkins. Let's take this password again. Uh, copy this, paste here. Of course, it may not, it may not work. Uh, to be fair, I don't really care if it, if this is working or not. My goal was to show you how can I get into virtual machines, not to how, not how can I get into the, into Jenkins. Um, all right, so, but I hope it was clear uh, how virtual machines may be compromised because if I have read access on virtual machine level, what I can do, I can just get into. Uh, so that was the second scenario where we talk about legacy application. Jenkins is not really legacy, but this application is based on virtual machines. So finally, let's take a look on the last scenario. And here we're going to cover um, application which is which should be a bit more interesting. In this application, we will have application, web application, uh, um, with a SQL database backend. Um, also, the, the credentials to access backend will not be stored um, locally on the web application. It will be stored in a key vault. And the credentials, they will be rotated periodically with Azure Functions. And also application will be protected with application gateway in front uh, with WAF feature enabled. So it looks looks like this application is quite secure quite secure uh but let's try that first let's try that so i'm gonna jump back to demo as usual um so we compromised let me close all of this so we compromised two environments compromised two environments now let's take a look um how can i try to get into this um, this application. Um, let me show you one more slide to, 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 to just um, give an idea what may be in our case an entry point. So my goal, my initial, my, my, my goal is to get access to database because all of the, the most interesting things will be there. Uh, but as you as you remember, credentials are to access database will be stored in Key Vault. Um, and let, let's first test if I have access to Key Vault or not. I'm gonna go to Key Vault. Maybe this user that was compromised already have access to Key Vault. Um, let's see that. If I go to Secrets, uh, no, there is no permissions to access Key Vault. Let me quickly give permissions to myself to just show you that, um, that th th those something, something exists there. I'm gonna just give permission to list, click add here and go back to secrets, uh, refresh, uh, no. Huh. Oh, damn it, I didn't save it, sorry. Um, Let's try again, click add, and let's click save. And now if I go to secrets, I should, yeah, I have password here, pass and username. So let me remove this permission, click save again. And now let's try to somehow get access to, to those secrets. And for me, entry point will be key rotation function because it's very recommended to have key rotation uh, keys or secrets in my case rotation um, and on Microsoft website you may even find the function that will rotate the secret in the key vault and on the target application like SQL database on, on, on our target 
So here's a slide uh, with my uh, with my function. So I have a function, and this function will uh, like change password on in SQL database and the key vault at the same time. And what the typical problem that I find periodically in the in the real world when a function has different configuration compared to key vault. So key vault may, may be very restrictive, but at the same time function will have also like a reader permissions inherited from subscription. And so function will have a bit more permissions. So, so users will have a bit more permissions on that function compared to key vault. Let me show you what I can do if I, if I have a case like this. So I'm going to go to portal and find functions, function applications. And here I have one, one function. So let's take a look at what, what do we have here. In under one fun function application, I have two functions. Uh, one is triggered by event grid. Second one is triggered by HTTP. This one is will be more interesting for me because I can trigger that manually. So let me show you the code. And so, uh, by default, when I deploy the function from um, from Microsoft GitHub, from from GitHub, it will show me the code code like this. So this code is is the, is the legit code to rotate secrets. But what may, where may be the problem? The problem is uh, by default, function is ac may be accessed uh, via FTP. So if you look at the configuration of the function. Uh, you may find that in general settings FTP is enabled by default. Uh, most in most cases you don't use that, uh, but it's enabled by default. And so, if you go to the deployment center, um, you may find FTP credentials here. And so, here's the FTP credentials. So now let me try to get those credentials, but of course, as usual, from command prompt. Um, so let me open command prompt here and let's try to get, uh, first of all, a URL for F FTP URL to, to connect the function. So here's the FTP URL. Let me copy this and paste to FileZilla. And then I want to get credentials of this function, of this function application. And here's the username. Here's the username. Paste here. And here is the password. Let me copy this. Here's the password. And now I have permissions to log in there. And I can see here the structure, which is my two functions. Let me go to, to the HTTP function. And here, I can, and here I can see the structure of the function. What I can do, I can upload, I can upload my own code and so this code but with, with the name called run.ps1 in this case it's the powerful function so in, i can upload my uh run.ps1 code and this code will be executed when function is triggered and so this function because the function has permissions to access key vault i will access key vault and i will get information from key vault on behalf of function and my, my code will just get information I need from Key Vault. Let's try that. I'm going to just open PowerShell and run the command like this. And so let's, let, let's try to get credentials from, from Key Vault. Fingers crossed, I will get it. Also, by the way, I can go to function itself and, and just take a look when it was, when it was executed. If I click monitor. Mm. Nothing here. Maybe already. Yeah, it's it's already give me give, give me information. So um, it finished. Now I can see that username is web app and the password is password. And those those credentials are will be used to connect to um, SQL Server. So let's try to connect to SQL Server now. Um, so first, let me take this URL and type my password. 
and now I can see I, I was connected um, and I can see my database with tables and the content there Um, and there, there's there's only one record there. Let me try to do the same from the different workstation. Let me just connect, copy this from different workstation. And now it says, hey, you can't do it because firewall does not allow you to connect to this server. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's take a look how this firewall look like. Now let's go to database and open this database. So every SQL database in the cloud has this, uh, the SQL server has the firewall database as well, by the way. So if I, if, you, if, I, if I click firewall, I can find here very interesting configuration, which is very, very typical. Uh, this firewall, this firewall has this option enabled. It says allow Azure services and the resources to access this server. What does it mean? Uh, many people think that it, it means that their Azure virtual machines, their Azure services may access the, the, this database. But in fact, it is not really true. Uh, this option means that any, any, once again, any Azure IP address will be able to access this SQL server. So, uh, from any from any customer subscription, from any continent from any country in the world, you will be able to access um, your SQL server, uh, firewall will not filter that at least, if you have this option enabled. So quite often uh, the, the 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 IT professionals in company security professionals, they don't really understand the impact of this option. So if I have this option enabled, then any virtual machine in Azure for, from, with Azure AP address may have access to my SQL. Let me disable this. Um, and let's try to uh, in allow only, um, only private access. So there is no public access at all. Now, uh, now, um, my SQL is part of the better. Um, now um, I have credentials, but access allowed only from internal network. So I cannot access from uh, from anywhere. Um, is it possible to get into database? Uh, yeah, if we compromise the application itself. And so from application, we can get access to SQL database. Let's try to do it, to do it. Let me go back to my portal, and I'm gonna open application. Um, so if I just uh, go to application configuration, you may find here networking. If I click configure networking, it says, "Hey, you must have a standard tier if you want to work with networking." So let me upgrade my application to S1. And so now I can connect my application to network. Let me do it real quick. So I'm gonna say uh, add VNet and I want to connect my application to virtual network. Click OK. And so that will take some time before this application will be able to connect. Uh, so as you can see here, it, it's already, con it, it's just connected, but in reality, what I can do, I can really quickly restart this application to speed things up. So now, if I compromise this application, uh, I will be able, I should be able to uh, get into database. Uh, the quite common question, wait a second, but how to compromise this application, especially if you look at them, if you look here, there's a WAF application firewall will not allow me to just simply get into application. Uh, yes, but I just want to remind you, uh, ju just want to really remind you that we have for web application the same default configuration. FTP is allowed. If I go click configuration, 
and go to general settings, I may find here FTP is allowed by default. So quite often companies, they do not disable this FTP. And in the same manner, I can get into this application as before. Let me try to do it. So let me close this and this. Um, now, if I just try the same, let me find uh, FTP URL of the application. Uh, copy this. And credentials as well. And so let me type credentials as well. So as you can see here, this application is nothing more than just a PHP page. And let's let's first explore this application. That uh, we'll, we'll just check that the application is working. Let me open the application itself. Let's click here. I can see the application is here and application is working. So let me just take a look. If I say uh, I'm a user, let's call myself Michael um, and um, um, let's call, say my email is msmith, whatever it may be, whatever.com. And let's say submit. This, this is working. So it's working with database. So application is working. Now, let me jump back to my FileZilla. And now what I can do, if I, if I know that this application is PHP, what I can do, I can upload my shell. And you know that PHP and ASP as well, by the way, uh, they they are executed on the server side. So the PHP will be executed on the server side, not on the client side. So if I can upload my, my own PHP code, I can execute something on server. Let me just run my shell and look at this. So now I have access to um, this workstation or the server through web shell. Web shell, not, not super interactive. So let me uh, establish, establish the better shell. Um, so on my web shell, I want to, 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 to fix the shell. I, I want to make shell better. And so now I have a shell. Uh, all right. So what I can, what I, what I found here that my username is just a regular user, not the so web server, the web server user, usually, usually a low, priv low privilege user. So I will not be able to do whatever I want on this server. My goal is to connect to SQL database. But the problem is that a reg regular server doesn't have tools to connect to SQL server. Um, I need some sort of management studio for Linux. It's, it's Linux, of course, not Visual Studio. It's not management studio. It will be like a, a SQL CLI. But to install that, I must be an admin. I, have, I must have sudo permissions or root permissions. I don't have it. So what I can do here, I can use some third party tools and the tool that you may try called uSQL, this tool will run without, will work without installation. And so using uSQL, I will try to connect to SQL database. I'm going to say uh, connect using uSQL and it looks like I, I was connected. Let's try to list tables. And look at this. I can see two tables there. Um, so let's try to list the content. And look at this. So my John Doe and my Michael user are there. So now I have access to SQL database. So uh, I hope all of this was informative and you get an idea how those things may be compromised. And we finally reached the end of the session. Please use new knowledge that you got from this session um, and go ahead and ask your questions if you have them. So thank you very much for your participation. See you next time. Bye bye.